Hit it, please. Celebrity, true or false? You can't handle the truth. All right, there we go. <laughs> Celebrity, true or false Bam. with John Bon Jovi. First up, true or false, you made your recorded debut on a Star Wars-themed Christmas album mm, in true. 1980. <laughs> what? <laughs> really? R2-D2, we wish you a Merry Christmas. That was the song. Uh, I was a, I was a gopher in a recording studio from uh -huh. the fall of '80 to like night '82. Oh, is that the album cover? Oh, we, that we is the it? actual album cover. And oh and a guy that gosh. was making these kind of Star Wars, uh, taking advantage of the the success of Star Wars, um, said, "Can you really sing?" And I said, "Yeah, I can." And he said, "There you go. There's a microphone. Paid me 183 dollars and." Uh, RSO Records, which, you know, at the time was a big Polydor label. I was very excited. I bet. And so R2-D2. R2-D2, the little robot. Right, right. R2-D2. We wish you we Merry wish you. Christmas. So there was a lot of bebops. R2-D2, we love you. Okay. <laughs> You're our only hope, John Bon Jovi. You're our only hope. Oh, my gosh. All right. Uh, so that's true. Next up, you and Richie Sambora initially wrote You Give Love a Bad Name for Lover Boy, but liked it so much you kept wow. it for yourselves. True. We were we were thinking it was interesting. We had two albums. First one did well enough. The second one doubled in success. It yes. was a gold record, and we were doing well. Um, but I noticed from afar, I said, huh, Brian Adams, who had come up at the same time as us, mm -hmm. was breaking through on a whole nother level. And I thought he just had a hit song with Tina Turner, and he had, you know, had these kind of crossover successes. And I'm just scratching my head going, why aren't, the first two album songs connecting in a bigger way. Mm -hmm. So we thought maybe what we need to do is write something for someone. And we got together um, with a, a friend of ours named Desmond Child, and we wrote You Give Love a Bad Name. And as soon as that was done, we were like, mm, I think we'll keep that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good idea. So good you idea. just heard it, and you were just like, yeah, that, that, we, it we was can't good. give that it away. It was just good. It was yeah, oh, good. Yeah. Can confirm. Yeah. <laughs> it was just good. Okay, next up, uh, true or false, John Bon Jovi. At first, you wanted to leave Living on a Prayer off of Slippery When Wet, thinking it wasn't good enough, but a group of teenagers you were talking to convinced you to keep it. Well, now that's a little stretch. Okay. Um, the truth was, is when we wrote it, it was it was very simplistic. We wrote it with an acoustic guitar and a, a notebook and a stand-up piano. So there was the famous bass line and the drum beat and everything else that goes with it to make it what it is today Yes. was, was not there. So literally, Tommy used to work on the docks. All that was finished, but we're banging on our thighs while we're, that was what we had in the room. And, in, and when we went to rehearsal with the band and Hugh came up with that great bass line, we started to feel the energy. But when it was the day that we wrote it, I said, well, it's, it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I didn't know what it was until it was demoed with the band. Okay. So where, where did it... No, not to ask no, you the, where the, the story the, was. There was a the pizzeria teenagers. behind the, the demo studio in my hometown. Yes. And because we had made two records already, we were popular. And the kids from this, the, the local kids who were our age, we said, you want to come and hear some demos? And they heard a bunch of those songs and went like that, like that. And if you're playing them wanted that or alive. You're playing a bad name. You're playing them prayer. You're playing never say goodbye. They're like, we like those. <laughs> so you, so did we. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it's, it, it was like a teenage focus group. Uh, the, the facto, four or five people. Like just, Again, it's exaggerated. It's four or five guys that were Jersey guys sitting around eating pizza. <laughs> Come on, Mike. I can relate. A bunch of guys too from was one of our cousins, Mike. Exactly. You know? Were you one of them, Mike? I Were you could... perhaps one of them? I never saw him at the Pony, but I saw Springsteen at the Pony. Right. You know why I wasn't always at the Pony is because the Pony was known for cover bands. Yes. I was playing around the block at a place called the Fast Lane, Fast... which was oh, original yeah. music. Mm -hmm. yes. I realized when I was still too young to drink, the way out of here is not going to the pony to play other people's music. Yep. We, my band, would go over and watch Bruce sing cover songs with the local bar band because that was where you went for the fun. Yeah. But I was playing to 50 people two blocks over, Fastly. cutting my teeth, playing my own stuff. Have you ever heard a good karaoke version of a song of yours by anybody, ever? <laughs> and where did that happen? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm sure there are. You know, I've been you, you I, ever, in a spot where it's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go up. And then, I mean, I was at, I was you at, look at, on the screen and you see your lyrics come and you go, oh, my God. Yeah, I don't go to karaoke bars often, <laughs> obviously. But I, was, I, I was at Charlie White. Weiss's son's wedding. Yes. And the trumpet player, 
and the wedding band started to play the bass line from Living on a Prayer, oh. and my head sunk. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> and now you got, <laughs> I'm going, oh, no. You know what this means? I got to get up there and sing yeah. <laughs> with a trumpet player playing the bass line of Living on a Prayer. But, you know, I was a good sport, and Charlie Jr. got married, and, you know, I had to go. Yeah, that's, that's everybody just swings to you oh, in the room. Oh, just terrible. Terrible. And you probably rocked it. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, All right. I love it. Okay, a couple more. This one is, uh, this one's a doozy. John Bon Jovi, Celebrity True or False. True or False, you once kidnapped Michael Jackson's pet chimp Bubbles <laughs> and took him to a hotel bar in Tokyo. There was no ransom help uh, for Bubbles, but the story was is we were all in the same hotel um, we had gone up to see Michael. We hung out with him a little bit and asked him to come down and hang out with us just to get the poor guy out of his room. Yeah. He didn't take us up on it, but he did send bubbles. He <laughs> <laughs> partied, partied hard. <laughs> <laughs> true story true story it was in a hotel not in a bar in, a, in our hotel okay and you true did story. not kidnap no we did he not willingly sent he willingly bubbles. sent bubbles but he you know he wasn't very socially you know comfortable yeah, with other bands sure and stuff, so well um so uh, true story did, bubbles came down practically smoking a cigar <laughs> hey i'm bubbles what do you got how's those girls did you did you think it was like a prank at some point no like, no no you... because we knew bubbles was there with him okay. i mean when you meet michael jackson he was he was so striking you know you walked into his room and and it, it, his manager took us up to see him and it was richie and i we went up to his room and and Michael literally had the bullet belts over the, the top of it in his own hotel room. Mm. And he enters his own hotel room and your your eyes go wink womp because it's Michael Jackson. Right. And we make small talk for a while and he was incredibly engaging and wonderful. And we said, man, you know, we're having fun. We got a couple of days off here too. Come on down, you know, we'll have a cheeseburger, you know, typical Jersey bar band stuff. And he, he demurred, um, but he sent bubbles down so then my last follow-up question did bubbles have the cheeseburger bubbles definitely had the cheeseburger the booze the, he was like, like all over my wife you know he's like hey babe i'm bubbles. bubbles now this last one we we were told this we didn't read this anywhere we were told this by lou diamond phillips when uh -oh. he was on the show yes so last one true or false you made a quick cameo in young guns 2 as a prisoner that was immediately shot shot in the chest yes so that's true true I was there writing the soundtrack for the movie. I wrote Plays of Glory and uh, and then subsequently the, the soundtrack. And so they said, you got to get a costume on and, and, you know, get in here. And so I had to jump at the chance to do that with these guys. And I didn't even get out of the, the pit where the prisoners were. Yeah. <laughs> they shot me and they said, shot through the heart. You're too blind. was like, oh, very funny. I wanted 17 lines, yeah. you know, my own can <laughs> close ups. They were like, no, you're dead. <laughs> so that was the end of so it. So that was it. That's it. Is, is that the only movie you've been in? No, I've actually done 12 movies. I started studying as a result of that. And I I'd had such success. I won a Golden Globe, I was nominated for an Oscar number one record for Blaze of Glory. I was like, this is easy. So I started writing more songs for movies. I got my hands on scripts and I said, Emilio and I, who became very close, was learning hobbies, basically learning how to ride a horse, shoot a gun in his race car movies, he's racing a car. I thought, these guys are doing really cool things under the guise of acting. I started to study the craft of acting and enjoyed it immensely, but you know, I still had a day job. So you basically took the fact that when they're like, hey, you should be in the movie, and they immediately just shot you dead. Shot me dead. That that was maybe just an indication of their belief in your <laughs> yeah, acting exactly. ability. Just so you, that then you, 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 hit the, you hit the books? Is that what you're saying after yeah. that? <laughs> From there, I said to study the craft. Fantastic. Yeah. Celebrity True or False mm. with John Bon Jovi. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.